Hi, Chloe. Thank you so much for doing this. I'm just going to ask you a few questions about your life as an activist. And the first one is, what events or beliefs in your youth led you to become the activist that you are? Mm, that's such a good question. As I've gotten older and I look back on my life, there's been one thing that's been very consistent, which is that I have always loved Maine. Ever since I can remember, I've, I have just been, I've, I've loved my home. I love where I grew up. I love the people, the community, the land, the lakes, the trees. And um, I've always known that there's no place else that I'd want to be and no place else that I'd want to build my life. But as I grew up, I also saw that everything that I loved about Maine and that made Maine, Maine was so under threat, not just from the global forces of climate change, but by local forces as well. And that so many um, of the answers to the, to the ways that we can protect Maine have to do with politics and the people that we elect. So that's how I ended up in office, basically, because I love Maine. As a lifelong Mainer, I hear you. So what continues to motivate you to be an activist? Like what guides you? What gives you courage? Mm, yeah, so I think for folks who, it was, I had this really interesting phenomenon in college because I would just talk to my friends all the time about how much I loved Maine. I, I went to school in Massachusetts and um, Massachusetts is so different from Maine in so many ways. Like you go to the grocery store and you don't know anyone and no one smiles and it just like has such a different feel in Boston than than in Maine. Um, and I would just always tell my friends how special my home was and how beautiful it was and how kind everyone was. And they wouldn't really believe me until they came to Maine. And then they were like, oh, I understand. So both in my own thinking and for the people around me, I kind of sound like a broken record because the thing that keeps me going is that I love Maine. I like completely changed my life to be able to live in Nobleboro, which is where, where I grew up and to build, be able to build my life here and make enough money to do that. And um, it's a very different lifestyle and harder in some ways and easier in other ways. But at the end of the day or in the middle of the day, I just look out my window and, and I'm in the place that I love and that's what keeps me going. Awesome. So what advice do you have for youth activists? Mm. Yeah, so I think one of the biggest, one of the biggest pieces of advice um, is just to really follow what you love. And I think a lot of times in activism work, it's very easy to get swept up in the hate and the anger of it. And I found that to be a very tough place to do this work from because it's just super draining. You get burned out really quickly, but we're angry and we, we struggle with all the bad things around us because of what we care about and because of what we love. And so I really try and root myself in that place. The other piece, um, I was just talking to, I was on a webinar yesterday with um, a bunch of young women or young female identifying folks from across Maine. And uh, I was asked the same question. And one of the things that I've been thinking about recently is just how important it is as you, as as I've grown up not to really box myself in around what I think act, my activism looks like or what it should look like. For example, I never thought that I would run for office because I'm such a, I'm actually an introvert and I don't really like talking with people all the time. But here I, you know, I find myself here and just being willing to question those barriers that I put up for myself and some of them stay there and some of them disappear, but just always questioning um, what guides you. That's really great advice. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.